Okay, so today's pepper review is going to be on the Tunisian bakalatai. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Tunisian bakalutai, or bakaluti, bakalutai. I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. I know I butcher these names, but my foreign language skills aren't the best. But anyway, let's take a look at the plant. And this is uh, quite an interesting plant. I would imagine this plant gets to a regular mature size of about three feet. The leaf size is pretty much, it's like a regular leaf, maybe slightly narrower than a regular leaf, maybe a little bit more narrow, <clears throat> but we'll say regular leaf for now. It's definitely not narrow leaf, and it's definitely not broad leaf. Um, the stem is smooth, as you can see here. It's a nice smooth stem. There is some purpling at the nodes, and interestingly enough, right at the base, Right where it gets woody, it's nice and purpley getting down there, which is something you don't often see with these type of plants. More of the, the dark plants, like like the um, like the Hungarian, the black Hungarian, or any of the black peppers like that, you'll see purpling down that low. But normally you don't really see that, so that's an interesting characteristic to note for this plant. Unfortunately, I don't have any flowers that are open, though it does have some more flowers coming out. But this wasn't a heavy producer, and I don't know if that's just because it was an off year for my pepper plants. So it very well could have been just an off year. And here's a look at the pepper now. I would imagine this is probably a common shape for this thing. It's going to get kind of taper down a little bit with a blunt nose or a nose that looks like that. And it's a red pepper, obviously. It goes from green to red. It's not any other type of color or anything. And I would imagine they probably get a little bigger than this. But I would, I'm, I'm assuming that this is the common shape for this pepper. All right, so we're going to pick this. And we're going to do a taste test on it right now. Now, I don't know if it's hot or sweet, so let's give it a pick. Get you out, here, out of the jungle. And that's what it looks like. The Tunisian Bacalatae. Bacalatae. The Tunisian Bacalatae. Try to give you a, a nice background so you can kind of see what it looks like. Interesting shape to that thing. Dying to know what it tastes like. It looks like it's a sweet pepper, but I could be wrong. Got to be ready for the worst with these things. Especially when you never had one like this before. Trying to just give you some good angles. All right. All right. All right, so let me walk you down through the jungle. Let's tiptoe through the tulips, right? And we're going to take a better look at this one. And this is the only pepper that came off of there. Now, it is putting out more flowers, but... It was struggling this year. Again, I can't blame the plant for that or the seed or the variety or anything. It was just a real off year for peppers this year. You will get years like that in gardening. One year, you'll have bumper crops of tomatoes. Peppers won't do good. Another year, you'll get bumper crops of tomatoes. I mean, of uh, peppers and no tomatoes. And in other years, you get nothing. You know, you won't get any peppers or anything. It really depends on the year. For some reason, it's like that. I, I don't know. 
different diseases, different temperatures and humidity and sunlight. And so that all really affects how your plants perform. So I can't really necessarily say that this isn't a productive plant. It really needs to be grown by itself in a container, fully in the sun and the whole nine yards. It's just got to be a good year for this plant. And where I live, it's 1,100 feet above sea level and I'm in the mountains. So temperatures tend to vary quite a bit up here. And because of those temperatures that go up and down, that it's not favorable for pepper plants. Tomatoes don't mind it, but pepper plants, it's not good for them. And most other types of tropical plants, which I have tried to grow in the past, but unfortunately I was unsuccessful because it's just impossible to grow anything here. In the morning, it's, it's a fog every morning here. Everything's dripping with water. So it's like it gets, almost like it gets rained on every single day, but it's not rain. So, but anyway, I figured we'll go over this pepper here. Let me get you in, right in the right lighting here. Try to get you in the right lighting. Hold you back. And this is the Tunisian Bacalata. I'll put the right name in the description and title and everything. I, I offhand, I don't know. I'm just going by what I wrote on the tag. So it may not be spelled correctly or pronounced correctly, but once I get inside and I, I put the right name in there, you'll see what it is. So you can laugh at my poor grammar, foreign grammar it is. But we're going to take a taste test on this one, but I'm trying to give you a good angle, a good look at it. And it's quite an interesting looking pepper. It tapers and it's gnarly, it's twisted. And it's got a blunt end on it. And it's probably going to be hot, even though I'm hoping it's a sweet one. But anyway, let's give it a bite. Well, right out the gate, it's a sweet pepper. So we don't have to go over the heat. But the skins work a little tough on that. I spent a minute or two trying to get all those little pieces of skin out of my mouth. And it was really, it's not that it was tough to chew. It's just the pulp part of it comes away and there's the skin that's left and they're all little square pieces and they stick to your tongue like velcro and so i have to spit those out or else i can't talk in the camera you would be spitting them out as i talk but it's a sweet pepper it's got a very nice peppery taste but not very strong it's not heavily strong but it is a sweet pepper and it does have some sweetness to it now i'm going to take another bite up more towards this red part let's see what that tastes like wow there is a tiny little bit of heat, very, very tiny so far. As I came up to the seeds, there's some, a little tiny bit of heat. It's so low, it's almost undetectable. It's lower than a poblano heat. I mean, the heat on this thing is like literally 10 on a Scoville scale. I mean, it's like almost nothing. It's a little flash and it's gone almost instantly. I've had hotter pepperoncinis than this thing. And pepperoncini is generally a sweet pepper. But you can taste and feel the heat a little bit. It's got a very nice sweet flavor. It's not necessarily fruity per se. It's not really a fruity type of a, a pepper. doesn't taste like apple. doesn't taste like peach or anything. But it's sweet and it does have its own flavor. This pepper, in my opinion, would be a good pepper for drying out and making a red pepper powder out of it. Um, I'm not sure what they do in the countries where it's grown in Tunisia. I'm not sure what they do, but it would also make a good frying pepper for stir fries and things like that. And I'm sure there's a lot of uh, dishes in Tunisia that it's applied. But you could generally use this in your salads and you could throw it in soups and stews. And, and it's a nice pepper. It's a very light taste. It's a really low heat. So if you had someone that was absolutely doesn't like heat at all this would be a pepper that they you can start getting them on the heat a little bit it's so light it would just be enough to let them feel the heat and be comfortable with it there's almost nothing like i said it's almost virtually undetectable but then again i eat a lot of hot peppers so i don't necessarily know if i'm singed to the point but it, it's right out the gate i'm telling you it's really low it's a really low heat on it I'll take one more bite and then we'll end this review because there's really nothing 
else really to describe about it other than the flavor like I just told you. So there's the placenta. Okay, I'm going to save those seeds. As far as the, the flavor of the pepper, the taste, it's a very mild flavored pepper. The heat is really, really low. I'm sure if you ate the seeds in the placenta, it might come up a little bit higher. Heat-wise, I can't put this past 10 on the Scoville scale. There is a little bit, though. Very, very tiny. I mean, you almost really got to feel it. It's like on the very top part of the tongue, you feel a little bit there. A little bit on the gums, believe it or not. It's a little tiny little bit on the gums. Outside of that, that's it. Nothing. It, it, to me, it's a sweet pepper, but... I do got to let you know that there is some something going on there. Now, the heat could vary from pepper to pepper, so we don't know for sure. I'd have to taste test like three or four of these and say, hey, you know, this one was a little hotter. As of right now, this is going to be considered a low heat pepper. I will put it in that low heat pepper playlist. But this is a very nice pepper. I would definitely recommend uh, if you can come across it. I'll, if I find links on Amazon, I'll, I'll link you over. But if you can come across it, definitely pick it up. It's worth a try. I like it. It's uh, it's kind of a pleasure when you're eating all these hot peppers all the time. Doing a, a pepper review on a low heat pepper or a sweet pepper, it's a pleasure. You know, now I'm going to be doing a hot pepper review soon. So because I was able to do this, it didn't burn me, so I can easily take in a hot one. But this was nice. I liked it. Uh, the skins were like a little tough on it for me. So once you eat it, you're left with all these little particles of skin. And when you talk, they kind of want to fly out of your mouth. So it, that's the only thing I didn't like about it. Um, but all, all in all, yeah, I would say give it a grow. And uh, that's it. That's your review for the Tunisian Bacalati pepper. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.